So welcome back to part two. Um, I'm interviewing uh, Jack Frost, um, uh, apprentice legend, uh, business entrepreneur. Um, this <laughs> it's not a great start. Um, Just try again. Don't yeah. worry. You don't have to grab it. I'll grab it. Yeah. Okay? So we'll talk about we'll talk about we'll talk about Rebel Pie um, yeah. shortly. But now we're going to talk about probably what everybody wants wants to hear about, given the topicality and the fact that it was on on Sunday nights. We had the big final on Sunday night. So, but let's start. Right back at the beginning, with the uh, with the interview process and how on earth do you how on earth do you figure out that you're going to be on you, you want to be on the Apprentice, and how do you go from wanting to be on the Apprentice to being on the Apprentice? So I um, well usually anything that I want to do I tend tend to be able to do it. Um, <laughs> that's, a good that's, that's a good tip. Um, no, I uh, so I sold my business and I promised myself I wouldn't work for twelve months because I had been working my socks off for the last six years. Um, and, you know, I mean, my husband kind of said that I, I, I wouldn't be able to do it. I was like, I could, I could sit around doing nothing all day. Usually, and I'm quite good at that, actually. But um, I, I think there's an application, and I thought, oh, that would be fun to, to, to fill it out. Okay. Uh, and I very kindly got invited to do an audition, and then I thought, oh, that would be fun. I mean, I had nothing to do, so it was like... It was almost like it gave me something to put in the diary and feel important. So I just right. kind of kept going through the auditions without really thinking about what that meant. And so when how, how many auditions are we talking about here? Everybody? Well, it's a it's number of auditions. Right. So I, I can't give I can't give away all of the secrets. But you know, it it takes place over a period of time, and it, they're also you know in one day you would go through a number of levels. So right. it's not like, oh, okay. yeah, so it's, it's kind of like screen testing and they test a number of things. I mean, the production team know what they're doing uh, when they hire people and they look for a number of things. And, um, you, you know, you're tested on everything from your business plan to, um, you know, your ideas, uh, whether or not you're willing to step up for yourself, all of that kind of stuff. They, they've got a range of, of ways to test that. So you go through the process of auditioning, which I thought was really fun. Do, do you meet the other candidates? No. Or do you so you, just you on your own, you go, and there's nobody, nobody else around. You don't have to beat Dif anybody in, the, in those stages of. There's there's different stages. There's different right. stages that are all different. Like they're they're they they test a different number of things. Um, so it's varied. Okay. Who do you meet at that stage? Do you, do you meet the celebs or do you meet like the the, the there's nobody's not, at that point organizers. nobody's a celeb. <laughs> everybody everybody's just an asshole auditioning right, basically. Right. So you don't see like Lord Sugar's like peek, peeking <laughs> around the door going, yeah. We'll yeah, have, I'll so, have that so one. Do, yeah. I'll have that one. No, no, no. I think you know it's um it's very much done by their senior production people. Okay. Um, and you know I don't work in production. I have no idea what they're looking for. I have no idea if what they're looking for is the same thing year on year. Um, but you know it's all. It's all it's all cloak and dagger, but I mean, you know, it's it's a process like anything else. And how soon do you, how soon do you hear like how many weeks is, is sort of you? So I mean, it I think it depends on where you are at and which stage you are at. So it's they they see a lot of people. They uh, I think there's about fifty thousand people that apply. So they go through fifty thousand people um, who are all saying stuff like you know. As soon as I open my mouth, I'm gonna make you money, and like <laughs> there's, there's a lot of stuff to kind of sift through, really. Um, so I think it depends on the stage, okay. but it, it 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 takes a while. Did you do anything particularly winning during the interview process that you would advise no. other candidates to do, or be almost, yourself, or almost ruin it? Was like yeah, I mean, I was. <laughs> In hindsight, I mean, my, my husband thought as if I applied, I was gonna, I was a dead ringer to get in. I was thinking, oh, I might not, I might, you know. Um, but you know, I think what I would recommend to anybody who's thinking about doing it is to be yourself. It's so so important to just be yourself because um, when you're put in the pressure and the environment of the apprentice, you do kind of end up regressing um, to those things. So if all of a sudden you you pretend to be I mean, this incredibly charismatic person, and actually, you're quite an introvert. It, it then right. becomes a difficult thing to balance in the process, and then on top of the stress that you've got, you're also trying to live up to this idealistic thing that wasn't even you to begin with. Um, so, I mean, yeah. 
It's, so you get found out pretty quick. Yeah, yeah, and it's hard. It just adds more pressure on you, mm. really. Mm. So, I mean, I think, like, I didn't go in there. I, and the other thing, I didn't have any pressure on myself. I mean, I wasn't expecting to win. I didn't really need the 250,000 pounds. I mean, I was just doing it for fun. Right. Like, it, I do, mean, do, it, do you have to supply the business plan? Like, yeah. Is, how, and how important is it, like, 50% business plan, 50% oh, I don't, I don't know. You, yeah, I don't know. I'm not, I'm, they don't tell you. I don't know. But, uh, you know, saying that, you know, I, I do everything with every amount of effort. So, I mean, my business plan was amazing. And my business... Was it Rebel Prime? It wasn't, no. It was a sponsorship platform. So, it would connect... I mean, I I regress to what I know really well because I kind of thought if I was going to get into the final five being grilled by some of the top brains um, in the country, I wasn't going to be falling flat on, like, how wine is made. (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) I mean, I'm going to stick with what I know. I'm going to turn base metals into gold. Um, so, you know, I, my, my, and I don't know, maybe in 10 years I might dust that thing out or somebody wants to buy it, but I mean, my business plan was super robust. I had everything in place and I spent, you know, I had nothing to do. I wasn't working. So I, again, that gave me something to do that wasn't work related. All right. So let's go. So first they obviously the house, that just seems to me is absolutely nuts. There's 14 of you, right, to start with. 16 and it, 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 of it's 16, us. and that's when you, is that when you first all meet, like in, in the house? You meet in the boardroom. You, you, oh, you meet in the boardroom. So the first right. episode that you see, and we're all like checking everybody out, we hadn't spoken at that. Like it's. You'd never met them before, you just. Oh, shit, I'm not sure if I'm going to spill that. You don't have to, you, you don't have to edit that part out. Okay. There's certain things I can't say. That's it's like the oh, secrets yeah. with the Billy and Kanye. It's an extremely like thing they know how to protect themselves. Take this <laughs> out. <laughs> so take anything I said about going to the boardroom, not knowing anybody. Start okay. start the question oh, again. Yeah. Um, so the question, yeah. So um, I mean, d- so you, you first meet the boardroom. First impressions? Did you, did you? I mean, what are you looking for when you look at the other candidates? Are you sort of are you I looking mean, for I'll potential winners, or you like um, oh, I can get I can get rid of that guy. Or, And, and how did your first impressions end up? Like, were they correct? Like, your first kind of instincts when you when you met the candidates? I'll be honest. I didn't come off to a great start um, with everybody. I am not used to being amongst that many people that I don't know in a situation where they don't know me. Like, I mean, I do lots of events. I speak. I speak in front of thousands of people, but everybody knows who I am and what what, what I've done. Yeah. And I mean that helps as a buffer. I've, and or, or there's alcohol involved. <laughs> I mean that's a great buffer as well. You know I'm not yeah. in. I'm not usually in a situation where, and I'm not a people pleaser. So being in a situation like that was more unsettling than I had expected. I think. So I, there was, you know, I think everybody was really excited about it. And I was just like really annoyed <laughs> with, every, with everybody. Right. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, and, and it took me, it, t- it takes me time. And I think, and I think a lot of, uh, I think some of the candidates didn't think I deserved to be there right off the bat um, in terms of because of previous successes and the fact that I didn't need the money. So um, I think that also set me off on not the best footing I mm-hmm. could have had. Um, but, you know, over time, you know, some of them, I really, like, Curran's a great example. I, Curran came out with some stupid thing in the boardroom when we first met him, and I was like, I'm going to I'm gonna hate that guy, that guy's <laughs> sexist, I hate him, he's horrible. I love Curran, and I mean, maybe he doesn't come across so well on screen with The Apprentice, but I mean, I genuinely really like Curran. Uh, and I, from the first instance I met him, I was just like, I hate that guy. I feel like I never want to be in the same room with him. So there, there were people that over time, but again, I mean, it depends on how you pitched yourself and then how you are. And I think over time, those, those walls kind of come down. There are obviously certain people that I didn't get on with at the beginning that I didn't get on with at the end as well. But then, I mean, basically, Not naming names. <laughs> straight away, you, you, you all go into a house together and, and, and you live in there? Like, are we allowed to ask about that? You, you can, yeah, definitely you can ask about it. I mean, um, I can obviously say what's been said. And, um, so people are aware that, you know, we're in a house. We are, you know, isolate, isolate is a negative spin on what it is. I mean, you just don't have time. You are legit working all the time. And right. you get home very late. 
and you're tired and you prep for the next day. So the question that everybody always asks is, is do you really have 20 minutes to get ready? <laughs> and like legit, you do. And also, I thought you'd have hair, makeup, and a wardrobe person. You have none of those things. Um, so what you do is you have to prep the night before, and you have to get ready. So I would wake up, my hair would be, I'd shower, do my hair, I'd do every, my outfit, iron, everything. So you, I would wake up, throw on my makeup, which doesn't take me very long, grab a coffee, because coffee's more important than the makeup. Um, but, you know, they're long days. I've never worked... I've worked harder than that, of course, but I've never worked that long before in my life, uh, and it, you know, it's a, it's a while. It's, 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 it's tough. It's, it's physically tough. And is it, is it, is it a girls' dorm and a boys' dorm? So you're all in the, you're all There's in a number of different. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the girls obviously stay with girls and the guys stay with guys. Can you chop but and change? Can you? No. So who were you? Who were you? Who uh, were you? It moved around a lot, but I was initially staying with Khadija and Jasmine. Okay. Did you, did you get along? Did I mean, you're living in a house with people, and I think there's a level of respect that everybody deserves. Um, so, yep. you know, I think I, I'm not. I mean, despite the, despite what it comes across on the other friends, I'm not outwardly and usually. I don't try to be rude <laughs> to people. Well, there's a couple of there's a couple of moments. <laughs> there was a, why are you still? I remember there's one is yeah, why I mean, are you still talking, which was uh, yeah. which, which was a good one, and, and um, um, yeah, it's quite. Quite fun, but uh, do, do you find it's like is it is it like very? We talk about the tasks and stuff. I mean, like the first task was it like I mean, suddenly you're interacting with all these people and and like and obviously everyone's kind of got a strategy as well and stuff like that. So are you are you kind of constantly thinking I've got to be on camera, I've got to be on camera, or, or the like camera thing is the last thing you yeah. think about. Uh, honestly, so you really just you really just bang it's in the it. last thing you think <laughs> about. Cool. Um, I mean, I didn't really it didn't bother me. I, I was surprised at how little I even considered it. I mean, you just, you have to, uh, it, it's so difficult to describe, but you can't make a mistake. So it's not like you're worried about what stupid thing is going to come out of your mouth. If you made just the smallest mistake, that's an opportunity for me to bring it up in the boardroom and get you fired. You cannot mess up. I mean, I've messed up so, so many times. Unfortunately, either my team won or I managed to fight my way out of the boardroom. But like, if you make the smallest error, or you make the wrong suggestion, you're, you're, you are in a dangerous position. So all you are doing is trying to do everything 100% to the top of your game. At least, I mean, that's the way, I, that's what I was doing. <laughs> at least, like, that's what I tried right. to do. And did you, did you think strategically, I mean, at, at times? Or just like no, a you can't. You, um, you really can't. And I think it's kind that people think I was manipulative and very strategic because, I mean, if I... I I, I wish I was more, perhaps, strategic than the way I, I come across, if I'm quite frank, um, if I'm honest with you. But you just don't have the time. There yeah. isn't the time to work around how to get somebody out or say stuff that makes – I mean, I'm not that quick. I mean, I'm super quick as a person, and I think really quick, and I learn really quick. I'm not that quick. Um, I, I just I – know I personally don't think anybody had a strategy because I think you think you can – Execute it, but you can't. You're so busy doing everything else. So in the early stages, who did, who did you think was going to win it? Do you know what? I had Camilla and tasks. Sean down. And, and Camilla my and Sean. Okay. Yeah. Right. Um, how, how the, the reason why is we were on task two together, and I really thought that they both did such a good job. And for me, Camilla, at 22 years old, was a, she led our group in a positive way, which you know, hadn't really happened, and especially under the leadership of Khadija at that point as well, is, is quite impressive. Um, and sh just the way and their calm nature, their positive way, their leadership skills at a young age, not having ever really ran big teams or ever really that much experience in, in certain circumstances. I think, I mean, I didn't have that. I don't have that now. And I have all of the experience that I have had. I still don't have that. So I think I, I noticed that early on. Oh, cool. So Fairly impressive, like uh, you know. I mean, it, it's, I, when I when I watch, it, I always think. Why is that pretty idiot? No, I always think, wow, this is just incredible. Like um, you know, it's the, the energy and the they keep going and stuff like that in the team and stuff. But anyway, let's talk about the boardroom and uh, and Norshia because that just looked just ah oh, just um, unbelie unbelievable tension and just just the awfulness of. I mean, is it super tense? You have no idea. I mean, I am somebody who I like. I deal with 
very scary for director people my entire life. That that is my that is effectively my job. Getting told no, getting asked hard questions all the time. I mean, I live for, it. I thrive on it. That boardroom is nothing like the way it's described on TV. The TV makes it look like it's really easy. It is not. It is seriously. It's difficult. It's challenging. It's stressful. It's emotionally draining. And I mean, and you've got people throwing you under the bus. Nonetheless, probably Karen and Claude throwing you under the bus. I mean, it's like, it's, it's, in hindsight, I'm so glad for it, but I was not prepared for how tense it really is. And um, is, that, is that the first time you meet Lord Sugar when he sort of rocks into the boardroom? So we don't see him on task. So Karen and Claude follow us on task and feedback. And they, they know us, who do you prefer, Karen and Claude? I mean, they're, we have very little interaction with them. If I'm honest, no, yeah, no, it's just, um, but we just, we, yeah, okay. they are there to observe. And I think, uh, you know, they, they do very good at dr their job. And if they were to favor people, I'm sure they have favorites, but you know, if they were to favor people, that would completely kill the task. So, yeah. I mean, we have minimal to no interaction with them. Okay. And, and then, and then Lord Sugar, you just got to, you just got to impress him and sort of um yeah like you say i mean if you if so if you if you fail the task you get called back into the boardroom and then the team leader i think has to pick two people to bring back yeah so you then to go back so how many times has that happened to you that you were, <laughs> you were i remember telling the producers before I started you could argue like, that's a good thing you could say well you know i kept getting called back i mean you know, obviously they needed the emotional support or like um, <laughs> obviously i gotta you know, face the television or whatever <laughs> No, I got called in because I, I did stupid things. No, um, I mean, I got called in a lot. I also lost, so I was project manager. I lost, so I got, I brought everybody in. Well, I didn't. Lord Sugar did. Um, on task five, I was in the bottom three. I think I was only in the bottom three, not being project manager in the first task. I think. I mean, I'd have to actually. I don't even know off the top of my head. I was, I was in the boardroom a lot. Basically, let's put it that, let's put it, let's put it that way. Yeah. <laughs> but you, but you, you know, you obviously did a very good job of, of getting yourself out of the boardroom again as well yeah. without without being fired, which is, um, you know, I mean, it, 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 the tension is just unbelievable. I mean, that's just it's horrible. Yeah, I mean, do you really do you walk out of it and you're like you're physically yeah. shaking and then you're going you're going back to the house and um, and and then that bit where you walk in and uh, and then the reactions of the people because they're like oh they don't know who got in and so they they, you know, they go. Oh, so and so didn't be. Oh no, they're still there. <laughs> they see, they're processing like all those emotions when when you when you like go go back into the bedroom and stuff, which uh, with the, into the, the house, sorry, which is a uh, you know just uh, well, it makes for great television. But yeah, it must be, it must makes be, for great television. Must, must be agony to be fair. And so you so you you got through, you got through, you got through, and then so then I did. Let's, let's talk about <laughs> so, yeah, so but that's episode nine, right? So yeah. you've done pretty well. Yeah. Um, and so what happened then? Were you the project manager in that? Task no, I mean I wish it was. You fired a lot of people in that one, didn't you? <laughs> Two people. You got trigger um, happy. Me, me, me you got trigger happy. happy. Yeah, I mean it, we. N I mean you could have guessed that it was going to be that task. To be fair, and I think that if we'd not have screwed up so spectacularly what was the, what was well, the task again? TV selling. That's right. Yeah, which I would remember. have been my yeah. task, yeah. quite frankly. I remember. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah. So uh, we made so many mistakes. I think all of us were to blame uh, for some reason, but. Tom had been project manager, that would have been his third time losing, so that, that can't be overlooked. And unfortunately, I got sucked into the double firing, mostly because, well, I mean, Lord Sugar kind of put it that he is looking to take a really small business, a very infant business, and make 250,000 pounds somebody's like a life-changing moment. And mm. unfortunately, that's not me. And I will be honest to say that I expected to be fired because of that reason. I never at any point thought I would, um, I mean, I shouldn't say that I never thought I would win. I mean, I think my business plan was good and I have no idea what they're looking for. And my business plan would have made billions. So I think that was important. But now that we kind of understand more of what Lord Sugar is looking for, I mean, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Oh, yeah just so, so you basically you don't see Lord Sugar that much and you're in the boardroom and he's basically like, laying down the law and telling you what you like and stuff like that. I mean, yeah. Is that quite frustrating? Because I no. want to like shoot back him and go, you should. how do you know? And I do. You know, kind, of, kind of thing. But, but I guess you have to listen to him because he just knows. Like, no, but he does know. People and stuff like because that. Ka no, but Karen Claude are with us 24-7. Oh, right. Okay. So, so he right. does so actually know. know. And right. okay. Karen Claude are very good at observing what happens. Um, right. So, I mean, Lord Trigger definitely knows. And, and the, the copious notes from 
really their side. I mean, they know exactly what's going on. Yeah. So uh, that that wasn't a problem. And I mean, there weren't very many times that I disagreed with them. And, and even even to be fired, I mean, I, it's two hundred fifty grand isn't going to change my life. And I'm not a small business person. And I'm you know I'm not looking to take. I think Khadija's turnover was seventy four thousand. I'm not looking to take seventy four thousand, turn it into a million. I mean, my last business was a multi million pound, ten to million pound business. I'm no, I, the business plan that I put forward was one that I think. I mean, I was very conservative in its figures, but it could have easily been a billion pounds um, by Ooh. year five. Um, just just because of the mark, it's you know, it's um, it's based on the need, the increase in sponsorship, but also sponsorship as the industry is almost sixty four billion globally. So um, yeah. to, take, to take even a small portion of that, it would be relatively easy if you had the right software. Right. So, it, you know, it's no surprise. And I think... Investors, I hope you're listening to this. <laughs> I'm not looking okay. at doing it. Software yeah. people. You can, you, can, you, can, you can have a word with them. We, we can set it up. <laughs> um, um, so I, I, I've got a question for you. Because um, when, when you came back into the boardroom in, um, in episode nine, I noticed that the first thing you did was you, you, you went straight and you pitched yeah. Lord Sugar. Was that... Was that a conscious decision? Yeah. yeah. And did you think, like, I have to get in there first? Because I noticed that yeah. you did it. And, and then, then I think it was Khadija yeah. and, um, and I can't remember who else it was, but they did it immediately after you as well. So did you kind of, like, were you expecting that? Or did you think, kind of steal my thunder or did you like it? Because it was, no, I'm not it was a really great... Thank you. I no, mean, it was ballsy. Let's go. Let's put everything ballsy. on the table, yeah. yeah. Um, well, what had happened is we had been arguing and bickering about who changed the strategy? Who should have been presenting? Who did this? And I mean, a lot of it was focused on the task of which everybody screwed up, myself included. You know, and I think if we were going to talk about who did what wrong on the task, I I was as much at fault as, as both of the other two. Quite frankly, I was. So sure. that that would have put me in the hot seat. So what I was trying to do was change the conversation. So I don't want to talk about the task because I legit could be fired because of that. I want to talk about whether or not you see me as a as a potential business partner, and because of all of the things, <laughs> and then stupidly, so I mean, stupidly, I didn't realize he wasn't looking for big business, <laughs> so I got fired because of that. So, would you, if you, so if, you had, if you had the time again, would you would you have, would you have gone for that? Do you think if you if you'd stayed quiet, he he, he might have. I mean, if I, if I stuck with arguing the task, maybe I mean it. I would have ended up going at some point. Yeah, you know, I, w- I would have, I would have, I would have ended up going at some point. I was happy to have made it to task nine. I had wanted to really do all the tasks. I missed out on one task. That's it. So I, I mean, in hindsight, it went down the way it went down. Yeah. And quite frankly, I think that when you look at Khadija and Camilla and their business and you know their agent and their ambitions, I think it's good. It was good to keep them in. I think in in the grand scheme of things, it, it was it was the right decision. Yeah, I see. And then, but then you obviously came back for the for the final Did. episode. Yes. What's, what's the deal with that? Then, do you get the option to come back? Would it like? Uh, do they ask? I like, mean, uh, it's so else? much fun. You would nobody would turn it down. It is fun, I, isn't it? Oh, I loved it. So why didn't all four, why didn't all sixteen of them come back? Like, so not everybody done? comes back. So it's only I think top performers such as yourself. I guess, well, come, you may, may, maybe, 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 maybe top performers, maybe people that are fun to watch on TV probably as well. So we yeah. we we get to come back to help effectively help yeah. help one of the winners win so yeah i mean yeah and you wouldn't you wouldn't say no it was great and it, also when there's no competition anymore it's way more fun so you know i was i was with tom so and Coyote. Just, you, you could make or break them at that point like um, yeah yeah but yeah <laughs> that, that's the problem for the the people that's still in the competition but i mean in, yeah, in terms of our sub team one, yeah. we're not against each other yeah so it means that you're you kind of say what you think say what you mean it, it becomes much more it's easier. It's easier dialogue, I guess. Yeah. More yeah. fun. Yeah, because I see when in, in America where they where they brought back like um, and it's a, a celebrity apprentice in America. They brought back two people who'd really fallen out and they had to work together yeah. in the final. So he basically spent most of his time trying to win round the person he'd sort of screwed over in the earlier round. Didn't get a chance to concentrate on the actual um, project and stuff. But anyway, so you came back and then obviously with the nuts commercial and stuff like that, and it was uh, it was actually brilliant. Like uh, it was box office. Um, television. <laughs> I really enjoyed it. it. Did some great. So you, you, you had a hell of a lot of camera time. I noticed yeah, in that in that final as well, which is um, I did, which is pretty cool. Yeah, no, it's cool. I mean, it was good to come back. I, I and, and I think before when I had gotten uh, accepted onto the program, I had up until that point not thought it through. 
And at that point, I was like, great, really excited. And then I put the phone down. I was like, shit, I don't think I should be doing this. <laughs> um, and so my husband, very, you know, he's incredibly supportive, as was my best friend. I mean, they're just like, don't worry, you'll be great. If you're not, you can move to India. So, I mean, we've, we've been looking at buying a house in Mumbai. So we were just thinking, if it's that bad, we'll just go to India for a year, wait till it dies down, and come back <laughs> and resume our life. So, I mean, fortunately, fortunately, I didn't look horrific or that stupid. But, I mean, it was so much fun. I'd do it again in a heartbeat. It was so much fun. Um, more fun than I expected. Awesome. Awesome. Is that you in the reversible swimwear in the commercial? No. With the champagne? No, that no, that's a, mo- that's a model. Like, right, okay. Sorry. Thank you very much. Sorry, no, yeah. I was on the other team. I was <laughs> on, on the, the nut team mount. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, that's I right. was on the nut mount. Um, and so now, now who we are, so we're sat here, obviously, like three days after um, the event, but of course it's not. And the event actually ended, I don't know, whether it was six months ago. It's pre recorded. Like, it's pre recorded, yeah. yeah. I mean, obviously, but I mean, how? what's the gap between. Are we allowed to say? Well, I, I can say that it's pre-recorded. Right. Yeah. But you didn't just record that like the other day. No, it's pre-recorded. So it must have. Like, uh, six we did, ago but we did do the like you're hired. hired. The you're hired is like pretty is live. So that's okay. with it, and yeah. that is so you don't know who wins. So even at the time, I mean, we oh, left. So you did. I didn't know who. So when you sat down on Sunday night to watch exactly, it, you didn't know. we didn't know. Well, we were in the you're hired. Yeah, exactly. So. When we all watched it together in the audience for the first time, we and we didn't know. Yeah. Oh, amazing. Yeah. Okay. So, all right. Well, so we've covered the apprentice. I'm sure there'll be lots of other comments and questions and stuff like that that you can you can you can post below and that maybe we'll get an answer. Maybe we won't. I don't know. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah. So now, so you're sat here. So what the what 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 did Jackie do next? So. We want to know. Yeah, I was looking when I saw my business. I looked at buying a vineyard in the Okanagan, um, and oh. Where? Uh, in the Okanagan, BC. It's it's. Uh, it's in Vancouver. It's near Vancouver. It's right. four hours, yeah, inward. I guess east east of um, Vancouver, which is wine growing country. It's eight hundred and sixty six miles north of Napa Valley, so it's got the it, you know it's got the same kind of growing conditions and even more so as as weather kind of changes. So I was interested in buying vineyard, and over the conversations that I had with winemakers, wineries, and and wine owners. I got really interested in wine and the production and the business of wine. And it reminded me a lot of sponsorship in terms of much of the industry is very antiquated. Uh, It's done in a traditional way. People don't have the money to shake things up or don't have the, you know, maybe the need or the want to do something different. So what I have done is I have taken a very unfashionable drinks category, which is sweet wine or dessert wine, um, specifically, ice wine, which is a luxury product made in Canada. So this is this is it. This is it. So this is like a kind of um, uh, like a sherry type. type it's it's a, a it's a dessert wine. So okay. um, it's made. It's called ice wine. It's from Canada. It's a luxury good. Why, Canada. Wait, wait, ice wine. What's it? So it's produced by leaving grapes on the vine until they freeze at the mercy of Mother Nature. Oh. Now, why that is incredible, incredibly risky is that if it doesn't freeze, you lose the whole crop. Um, if it freezes too, quick. yeah. If, if it freezes too quick, you lose it. If it freezes too late, um, all the birds eat the grapes. Um, and if you freeze it and then it thaws out, uh, you lose the crop. So you have to pick it at the very first moment that it's frozen, often in the middle of the night, with a labor force uh, that kind of uh, d- does that. So and then and you press it, and what that does is it sucks all the water out. So it concentrates the flavors. Yeah. So you normally get 10 drops of liquid in a table wine grape and one drop of liquid in an ice wine grape. So it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. Uh, it sounds, uh, yeah, pretty super exclusive. Um, even the grapes yeah. themselves are sort of minor, minor sort of, yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah. And, um, and so how much do you have? Are you selling it in Canada? Are you selling it in the UK? What's, what's, what's the deal? It's, exclusive, ex- it's exclusively available in the UK right now. Or right. You can order online. It's in a couple of merchants. It's in a couple of Michelin star restaurants. Um, check out our website, www.rebelpipi.com um, for stockists. But we're going out to Asia as well. We're launching our second product um, later in the year. So 1,600 oh, right. bottles. It's really limited. Next year, we'll be doing 3,000. 1,600 bottles? Yeah. There's only 1,600 only bottles? Only in the world. So yeah. if you want... Some rebel pie, ice wine. You got to be quick. Yeah, basically. very quick. You got to put your order in. You got to get a night. And I did see. I think I saw a tweet that said that you may even deliver it yourself personally. I've been doing some hand what deliveries. A, yeah. What could 
could be better. <laughs> you what know, you start up business, be cutting, cutting corners, cutting it's costs. Chris, it's Christmas Eve. <laughs> Presumably, I don't know how far you travelled to deliver one. I uh, mean, I've, I've gone quite far. It probably have to be London based then. Well, I mean, it depends. It depends right. on how much you buy. Okay, brilliant. Well, depends on how much you buy. There you go. <laughs> well, there's only 1,600 left to, um, to get in there as quick as you can. And um, yes, yeah, so, I mean, so it's, it's going great. You also have this beautiful uh, flat yeah. um, in central London, which, which is incredible, with a fantastic Christmas tree, which I wish I could show you, but I'd knock everything over if I tried to move the, the camera around. And you do a little bit of you do a little bit of Airbnb with that, do you? From, from I do, time time? yeah. I mean, um, I travel a lot personally. I mean, I, I think I was only in the UK really? last year, three three months. So did you go to year? India? With yeah, I was in India this year. Um, we'll probably be going back in a couple of months. Uh, we're off to Japan next week. So, I mean, I, I, I like to do stuff. I like to get, get around. Um, so we rent our flat out while we are away. I mean, I don't want people to know that. <laughs> crazy, well, crazy, no, crazy, 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 you know, you're very young. You've still got a great deal um, to come. Yes. And it's very exciting. You've got the wine. Yeah. You're not in the spon- Are you in the sponsorship game at the moment? I'm still you? sitting on the board of the European Sponsorship Association, okay. um, and I'm still the chair of the awards, which is our flagship event in London, where everybody kind of from Europe flies in. So I'm involved in that space. I do. I will do a bit here and there for people. I mean, I love it. I do love it, and it is definitely a passion of mine. But um, you know, my focus very much is the wine uh, and creating a really strong disruptive brand. What I'm trying to do is incredibly ambitious and it needs, you know, me to be focused on that. So, and, and that is where my focus is for the foreseeable future. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much Thanks for your time. For what a fantastic interview, or at least I thought it was, and I'm sure you will too. And um, yeah, I mean, just, you know, hopefully, like I said, if you have any questions, um, you know, Maybe we could do a webinar or something like that, but it's just a fascinating ex- experience to to, to, you know, to meet a charismatic entrepreneur, to learn a few secrets about about the apprentice, and, and hopefully you found some things that you can sort of take away from this conversation. And um, yeah, thanks very much for um, uh, for listening or, or watching or whatever means that you're using to um, uh, to get on with it. Thank you very much, to Jackie, um, for giving up her valuable time, and uh, we will we will see you soon. Bye.